Now it's time for Atwood Machine Redux. You may recall we worked on an Atwood machine earlier. It's this device that's got a disc and a string hangs from the disc with a mass, M1, and on the other side, a string hangs with a different mass, M2. And the idea is one is bigger than the other, and our problem, M2, will be greater than M1. So you know that it's going to accelerate like this. And historically, these were a way to make precision measurements of gravity in a way where things didn't fall so fast, because timing was, you know, harder. In the modern day, the Atwood machine is used to write homework problems, is largely what it's for. We have an Atwood machine, the department. Here's our very beautiful uh, historic Atwood machine here. You may have heard everything's bigger in Texas. Well, that also applies to Atwood machines. Ours is so big, we can't get it out of the demo closet. It's too tall. I think it's actually that Hertzine amp has kind of settled a little bit. I kind of understand that myself. I used to be 5'11". I'm now 5'10". I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Now, the way we approached this problem before is we thought about the acceleration. We said, okay, we know this is going to accelerate up, and this is going to accelerate down. And since the string can't stretch, they're going to have the same acceleration. So when we do this problem, we're going to treat everything as a magnitude, and we're going to put in signs for up or down. So we're going to think of this as the positive direction, and this is the negative direction. That should make everything work out. So let's look. The first thing to do is our free body diagrams, right? So here's M1. It feels the tension up, and it feels a force M1G down. Here's M2. It feels the tension up, and it feels M2G down. And then next, we write Newton's law for each one. Let's see. So for T1, we have, uh, or for mass 1, we have T minus M1G, tension up, M1G down. It accelerates up. And for this one, tension up, M2G down, and it accelerates down. So I'm going to put minus M2A. And you look at that, and this is what we did before. It's two equations, two unknowns, right? We don't know the tension, we don't know the acceleration, not much to it. Well, there's more to it than that. Now we're going to do it more realistically. Let's go look at our Atwood machine again. So let's get a look at the disk in our Atwood machine here. No, I forgot, we lock it. Yeah, hold on. Let me get my Atwood machine key here. There we go. So here it is. So you can't quite see them, but there's two holes right here where the strings hang down for the two masses. You watch them go up and down, and you measure their position, and this part is a little clock to figure out the acceleration. But this is the important part, the disc. There it is. I'm rotating it. It has mass. It's made of aluminum, and it takes a little bit of torque for me to turn it. And as you turn it, the brass parts turn. That's nice. All right, that's all we need to know. So what we ignored is the mass of the disk before we did a massless disk. But now that we're thinking about torques and moments of inertia, we can treat this problem more realistically, give the disk a radius big R and a mass M3, and have to include that in the problem. So what happens when you have some mass here? That means for this to accelerate, the uh, disk is going to have to accelerate, go through angular acceleration. There's going to have to be a torque. The torque is going to be applied by the string, right? The string is going to push uh, from the side on the disk. And that means the tension in the string will not be constant. So early when you're learning about tension and strings, you say tension's constant in the string. It's just tied to two things and pulling, it's constant. And if it goes around a massless pulley or a frictionless surface, the tension's constant because it can't apply any horizontal force that might change the tension. But if you're using the string and it's stuck to the sides of this disc and it's accelerating the disc, you actually have different tensions. So this side we'll call T1, this side we'll call T2. That way if you envision what's happening here at the top of the disc, it's feeling T2 there, it's feeling T1 there. And it would require T1 and T2 to not be the same to have a net uh, torque to accelerate the disk. So that means this is 1, and this is 2, and this is 1, and this is 2, and now we have three equations, or we have three unknowns. And how many equations do we have? Only two. That seems like a problem. Except we have one more. We're going to use 
the acceleration of the disk. And that'll give us our third equation. So we're going to use that. Let's see, we're going to say uh, sum of the torques equals I alpha for the disk. All right, so let's see, what are the torques? The torques are, let's see, T, now we've got to think about positive and uh, negative in the rotating sense, right? So we want to say T1 is going to tend to rotate the disk counterclockwise, right? So T1 times R we'll call the positive torque. All right, so it's a force being applied um, at a radius R, the axis of rotation is in the center. We're not going to quite go to the point of thinking of that as a vector and that as a vector and doing the cross product. I mean, we could, but let's not. Let's just say we know counterclockwise in a good Cartesian system is positive. So T1R pulling it one way minus T2R pulling it the other way. So that's the sum of your torques, and that equals I. And we have a disk rotating about its center of mass, 1 half mr squared, 1 half m3 r squared uh, times alpha. And the angular acceleration alpha is related to the, um, uh, just the acceleration of the string. Alpha is a over r, right? Just like the arc length s is theta r and, uh, and uh, v is omega r, then here we could say that this alpha is a over r, the acceleration we want over r. Because the string isn't stretchable, and if the string accelerates, then the edge of the disk um, accelerates. All right, so I think then to solve that, what we're going to do is we've got to combine these three. So now we have a third equation, and we want to solve for, I think, A. Acceleration is what we're trying to solve for. So let's make a little more room here. Let's pull this up. And Hersey Amphitheater, Theater, 1914. A little bit has changed, but look at this. Look at what we got now. Watch this. Ooh, look at that. We've caught up to sort of the 70s, I think, with that strip lighting there. Um, so now what we're going to do, I would probably solve those for T and plug them in there. That would probably be the easiest way to get to A, because that'll let you directly eliminate both Ts and then have something just in terms of A. So T1R. So let's write T1R. T1 is M1A minus M1G. Is that right? Uh, no, plus. Oh, no, uh, yeah, plus M1G, right? If you solve that for T1 times R, yeah. And uh, minus, and then T2 is minus M2A plus M2G, uh, plus M2G. And that's also times R. So there's your T1R minus uh, T2R. And that equals 1 half M3. And then R squared, A over R is just R times A. All right, so now what do we want to do? We want to solve for A. So I'm going to get all the A terms by themselves over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's also notice we can cancel the R's. Hey, it doesn't depend on the size of the disk. It just depends on the mass of the disk. Um, A, so over here we have M1. And then here we have minus minus M2, so plus M2, and then I've missed a negative sign somewhere. Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 la, la, la. Da, 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 da. Where did my negative sign go? Um, this minus this. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm bringing it over here. So, right. Uh, so, I alpha, oh, yes, the negative sign is because the acceleration is we know we've decided it's going to pull down. It's going to go this way. That's a clockwise rotation of the disk. Clockwise is negative. Before we said counterclockwise is positive. Clockwise is negative. All the values we're putting in are magnitudes, so there should be a negative sign here. Right? And here. Therefore, when we bring that one over, we're going to get plus 1 half m. 3. There we go. All right. And then what do we have left? Left we have the g terms. So this is going to come over negative, and this is going to come over positive, because that one's positive. So it's going to be m2 minus m1. There we go. So now we can get the acceleration 
in terms of g, uh, m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 plus 1 half m3 times g. So just like the Atwood machine where we pretend the disk is massless, this one will also give you acceleration smaller than g because it's the difference in m1 and m2 over the sum m1 plus m2, but it's even a little bit slower because it has to accelerate the disk.